I'm going to turn the program over to Amy and Kenneth and Leslie. Leslie. Okay. Um, they are here from the Sh uh, Shaw Pitbull Rescue Association. So, so glad y'all could come today. My name is Leslie and I'm with Shaw Pitbull Rescue and we're here today just to inform and educate y'all about what we do. We are a nonprofit organization. Um, we have a big adoption event coming up this coming Saturday at Tractor Supply. You, it's a pet friendly and kid friendly day so we'll have jumpers and face painting um, as well as you know multiple dogs there for adoption. There's also a vet coming out that day for $5 rabies shots so you can bring your cats or dogs with you and get those for $5 that day. Uh, yeah, we're just uh, wanting to make aware that we started a rescue because there's a lot of, you know, bad media on pit bulls and a lot of them are the wrong people have them. Uh, we have a lot that we get in that are starved to death. People have gotten bad shape, lost jobs around here, so they move off and they leave their pets behind. And we, we find a lot of pit bulls like that that people just move off. And the dogs will be near death from starving. People just leave them in their yard. So we try to rescue them, get them rehabilitated, try to find them a, a good home with people that can understand dogs. And uh, our goal is we want to try to get uh, to where we can more or less train people instead of dogs. Because a lot of people, you know, need, <laughs> need the training instead of the dogs. But, uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about pit bulls. Uh, They're the most, most abused yeah, and neglected the, breed that there is. Anybody, I look at it as anybody that's, that has uh, rowdy teenagers should be able to handle a pit bull. Because <laughs> they're going to act about the same. <laughs> they're going to try to get everything they can. Uh, but yeah, we're just looking for support. We're trying to get something positive in Columbus with it. and. Try to teach people to get the the bad stereotype and all out, uh, and try to get it to where we can get the right people to own the dogs, because you don't have any trouble with it with the right people with them. Uh, and it just it would look a lot better in Columbus if you didn't ever hear stories of you know any kind of dog biting somebody. And most of it is the owners have neglected them, haven't the dogs haven't properly socialized. Are trained so they do whatever their owners have taught them to do, and you know something like that turned loose is bad. So we try to correct that. Right, it's not a bad breed. It's you know what they're doing, what they're trained to do. Um, we also have some brochures up here today for our corporate sponsorship. Right now, we are asking for donations. We just something if you could look into it. I mean, it's from any little amount to there's up to like a titanium level. Um, but right now we're at 25 dogs. We're at ma we're beyond maximum capacity. We have multiple kennels right now that we've got two dogs in each one because we have no more room and we're getting call after call of more dogs that are on the side of the road that are starving or whatever the case may be that we need to take in, but we have no room to take it in either. So um, right now we're really trying to get more money together to get more kennels, to make more room, to hold more and to be able to get more volunteers, more people that actually have some knowledge about pit bulls and the breed and the training with them to help and work with us with the animal and get them, you know, rehabilitated and get them into good homes. Uh, another thing too is uh, to get awareness out to the public if you see something going on with dogs, it's not just animal cruelty. Uh, we went to a seminar at Mississippi State for uh, animal cruelty and a lot of that leads into bigger things. So if you got people that's abusing an animal, it's just not the animal that's getting abused. Sooner or later, that's going to progress into something more, and that's a person in society that's going to be causing trouble. Uh, the FBI has already linked a lot of that to some serial killers started out, you know, abusing animals. So, and a lot of people just think, oh, it's a dog, and they don't pay any attention to it, but you got a lot bigger thing to look at than just an animal getting abused, you could have bigger trouble down the road. And we're getting calls, like I said, from everywhere, every day. Like right now we have one named Buster who came to us from Ohio. Uh, people are calling and they're calling other rescues and nobody has room. So we're a lot of times the second call. And he can tell you a little yeah. bit more about Buster and Bruiser. Yeah, we have, uh, we had uh, had someone contact us online <coughs> on our website. They had uh, 
animal cruelty case up in uh, Hamilton, Ohio. They had went into a home. A uh, woman had two pit bulls. Well, one of them was, you know, very malnourished, so they took the dog, got it back to health, and then somehow she got the dog back. And then they got another call, went back, and both of them were starving to death. So they got her on two counts of animal cruelty. But the younger dog, they had to put it down because its temperature was so low it wouldn't even register. <clears throat> and they got the other dog, you know, back healthy, but they said he had aggression problems and they couldn't adopt him out. And they couldn't work with him and wanted to, you know, find somebody that could work with the dog. And we've had him and been working with him, and it's an awesome dog now. now he's turned out, you know, really nothing wrong with him. He just, you know, he loves people to death, he loves other dogs. And all it was was just needed somebody to feed him and take care of him, teach him right from wrong, and that's all he really needed. Uh, and teach him how to be a dog. Yeah, that's the teach main thing. Teach him how thing. to be a dog again. Yeah, Folks don't socialize their animals, and they have small problems with dogs nipping or growling or barking. And a lot of it's in little dogs. They think it's cute, but it's really very bad aggression to start out in a small animal like that. You, you want to stop that right off the bat because any dog's capable of biting. So, um, like I said, most of them, we try to rehabilitate them, get them back to. Get them back healthy. Yeah, get them healthy. Get them spayed and, and neutered. More or just teach them to the, be a dog again. And a lot of the money that we raise, it goes to getting the dogs spayed and neutered. All the dogs we adopt out, they are spayed or neutered before they ever go. We don't need more out there breeding. That's the problem today. Is there's too many people breeding dogs to think they're making a quick buck and they don't know exactly what they're breeding necessarily. Um, don't have papers. They're just breeding something, breeding mixtures of breeds. And they wonder why they have problems or temperament problems. Well, that's part of the reason. But a lot of money, I'm sorry, goes to spaying and neutering, um, the vet bills, the flea medicines. You know, some of them come in with skin problems, all of that. Their shots, their rabies, kennels and food. I mean, just everything to take care of them and get them back healthy and get them back to where we can adopt them out. Okay, we, have, we have one that come in from uh, Memphis that was so covered in ticks you couldn't even pet the dog. Oh, gosh. It was really and bad. you could see his backbone, his hip bones. And the ticks were like all embedded, yeah, and all in his covered. neck, just ticks among ticks. And them. finally got, he's starting to clear up well, and starting to put on weight, and it's actually looking like a pretty dog. He's a different color than I thought he was. That's kind of great. Like he's great, dog. he's blue now. <laughs> Definitely. But just the look on the animal's face when you get them back healthy, is worth it all just to see how they kind of look up at you and look like they're grinning. They're glad to, oh. you know, that somebody's took care of them and so got them back fat and healthy again. Mm -hmm. Do y'all have any questions for us? Yes, sir. Without giving away my afternoon entertainment, every time I watch Judge Joe Brown and Judge Judy, <laughs> every dog case involves an aggressive either towards the human or another animal. Are they picking and choosing? I mean, they're, it's not... They're, 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 picking, they're, they're picking and choosing. Uh, I had a guy at an insurance company tell me once he couldn't insure a lot of houses because of pit bulls. And I asked him, I said, why? And he just, well, we just, that's their policy. I was like, no, there's a reason. And he told me, he said, well, he said, we had a house in Starkville. He said, the people owned a pit bull, and it was in the carport. Well, a stranger come up in the carport trying to break in the house, and the dog bit him. But the dog didn't leave the carport. And the guy wasn't, you know, he didn't live anywhere in the neighborhood. Nobody knew him. He was just passing through. So you know he was up to something. But he was able to get a lawyer and sued the insurance company for a million dollars in one. And the insurance guy said, that's why it's easier just to, say it's the dog's fault because we was out a million dollars. So. And he said, the guy clearly was going to rob the house. The dog stopped him. But, the dog was and he said, the dog didn't even leave the carport. But the guy was up in there on the dog, and really it's kind of bad. But Now, you'll have, uh, like any breed, the, uh, what is it, uh, like your little weenie dogs, the Dachshunds. Uh, they're right now the worst biting dog there. 
There is. But the problem is not the size of the dog. That's where it goes back to the owners. If a dog's not kept in check, they get dominant. They feel like they're in a pack, in a family. Or a lot of people will love on a dog for, you know, if one acts shy or something, they pet on it to make it feel better. Well, people that are work to a dog, they let you know that you're weak. So the dog tries to step up and be the leader of the pack. And the only way they can do it, they, they don't have hands to put on nobody, so they have to use their mouth. And that's the way they get, you know, their position let over is they bite with their mouth. And Another thing that Kenneth told me that I didn't realize before I started working with them, I met them in September and I started working and now I'm partners with them and this is what I want to do for my part in the world. Um, but like a dog, if a dog was to be aggressive towards another, well my first instinct back in the beginning would have been, you know, to put my hand gently on the dog, you know, to calm that dog down, to send my energy through it, but no, that actually was the very wrong, very bad thing to do. It makes the dog think that they're doing something good. You are petting them, you are praising them, or just putting your hand on them to show them that they're doing good so they'll do it even harder and stronger. Yeah, and that's, that's what's bad. A lot of children nowadays, I've noticed, don't even know how to walk up on a dog to properly pet a dog. We can take dogs somewhere just watching little kids run up and how they want to pet a dog. Like, and okay. When I grew up, you know, people knew how to handle dogs. They could walk up to a strange dog and pet it. And children nowadays have no clue. And, you know, they walk up and try to reach and pat on top of the head and look the dog in the eye. Well, that's showing aggression to a dog looking them directly in the eye. And you should always reach under the chin, but not just walk right up to pet them. Let them come to you first. I'm hoping, that not nervous. <laughs> I'm hoping in the future for us to be able to get something together to where maybe we could do some kind of meeting with the public, with our community, and educate them, not just pit bulls, but educate them on dogs, period, and the way to act, some things to do and not to do. Because I, I really <coughs> think a lot of people in our community, they just, they don't know. They've never been told. They've never, I mean, who was going to tell them? So I think that would be something really good for us if we could do that to help a lot of people with their animals and with other animals they might come across later on. Yes, sir. <coughs> the, uh, the, the, the fighting dogs, obviously. Yes, sir. Y'all have adopted a lot of them. Does, do you get that out of them? I mean, how do you... Most of them you can. I mean, it depends you know. on how, how well, severe. You can change their behavior. You can change the behavior. Definitely. What it is is, you know, all dogs are pack animals. They like to be in a pack. Well, pit bulls, they keep them away, and a lot of times some that's hadn't been fought try to fight. It's just bred into them. But as long as you keep them from doing it, they won't ever do it. But a lot of people, if they have one bark at another dog or growl, the first thing they do is keep it further away from a dog you just or lock it up. You just said it's bred into them. Did you mean that the pit bull breed is an, uh, an aggressive dog? Uh, it's neighbor? not really aggression where a lot of people think of aggression. It's uh, a true pit bull is like three-quarter terrier and a quarter bulldog. That's the way they were originally designed. And so you look at little Jack Russell terriers and all that, they have a prey drive. And you can never cover up that prey drive. It's their willingness to go. If you tell them to do something, they're going to die to do it for you. And that's why people take advantage of pit bulls because they're not afraid to fight and people you know, exploit that, well, the dog's going to do all he can to please his owner. And we have some, we have one dog that come in, he wouldn't charge at a dog until you walked out in the yard, and he would look to see if you were looking at him. Then he would run and growl at another dog and stop and try to look at you and wag his tail thinking, you know, he's supposed to get praise for it. So that's all he ever knew growing up was, you know, that's how he's supposed to get love and, and affection is, to fight, you have to get them out of that and let them know they don't have to do that. To, you know, they get treated for the good things they do, not the bad. But you will have some that that's so severely treated that you're not going to get it out. You know, the only thing you can do is put them down. But there's a lot of them that don't have to be put down. That's that are turn around real quick. Yeah. we can save a lot of them. But now there's going to be a few cases that we will get in or other shelters that the owners of the dogs have done certain things to to make the dog actually crazy, to make it where it can't come back. 
like feeding it gunpowder. Yeah. It's severely messing up their brain. You can't, we can't, now we can do everything we can for that dog, but we can't pull it back from that. A yeah, lot of people, lot of that people are trying to make them dogs meaner. Because some bulldogs are naturally, they're not going to bother people. And they'll want them to guard and get worse with people. They have those that, oh, feed them gunpowder. Some of them have shot them up with crystal meth and things like that. Well, they drive the dog insane, and the gunpowder will fry their brain and eat their intestinal linings out, so they're angry all the time. Of course he's going to guard. He's in pain. He's wanting to bite anything around, but you just can't. I mean, there's nothing you can do for them because you know, they've already been messed up. But, you know, you run across something like that, too. We're still trying to make a difference. Well, if the Humane Society gets in a pickle, do they give them to you? Um, not, our, not our local The, the local Humane Society. Society isn't working with us at this we time. Get, uh, we hope so in the future. Start from West Point does a lot yeah, of work with us. Start from West Point have both been really great. Yeah. Um, but then we got several dogs from them, ones that they knew would really easily be rehabilitated into good homes. And... Um, but Lowndes County, like we've, we've talked to the lady several times, and I'm glad that, you know, there's fellow animal lovers out there to make a difference, but right now they're not going to work with pit bulls or us, or cars. So if they get a pit bull in, then what happens? They, they don't accept it, or? Well, they, they, they won't much say, but, Most you know, the policy is they're not to adopt them out. Right. And so, so there, you, you can pretty people. much figure out what happens to the dog. He gets put down as soon as it comes in. But and they won't contact you, huh? No, the sir. Work. No, sir, not right now. <laughs> and see, so there's some, like I said, there's some, Hopefully I can see where they change. get so many dogs coming in, they can't keep them but so long, whereas a rescue... But there's people like us. Yeah, hangs on to dogs a lot longer to work with them, where humane societies don't really work with them. They get them in, give them a few shots, and hope somebody will adopt them out in a couple of weeks. And, you know, then they got more coming in after, so they got to get rid of some. To